praises. We are live. He still got that video up. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Yasha Allah. Want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father and the Heavenly Son, you know, whose names, hey, we're going to let you know whose names we're talking about in this lesson. All praise to the Most High, right? So shout out to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. A mighty shalom to all of the Akim that's going out on the highways and the byways in the last days and doing the work. And for those that are newly into this knowledge of being the Israelite in the last days, a uh, mighty shalom unto you and your household in the last days, right? So we are Yahweh's camp. I'm Brother Yashu, the suffering servant. Hey, shalom. This is Officer Ram. Hey, Shalom. This is Brother Joshua. Hey, it's Brother Ephraim. Shalom. It's Brother Aniel. Shalom. This is Brother Aymat. And for the Most High's name, say, we are Yahweh's camp. All praise to Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Call Hala Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Baraka. Oh. So let's go into this video right here. Let's see what he's talking about. You know, I know, uh, I know real power when I see it. The hey, stop eye. right there real quick, right? So we got to understand the lies of the falsehood in the tongues of these people right here that have been put in position over God's chosen seed in the last days, right? So here it is that we got a, you know, <laughs> standing proud and tall, got his flags and all that behind him. But he's going to tell you who he is here shortly, a white boy, right? Go ahead. We're honored to have presidents, all the presidents here tonight. And I want to thank him. For, and by the way, you know, I'm not smart. I, I, I may be a white boy, but I'm not stupid. Yeah, stop right there. <laughs> so he just told he just told the, the American people, right, in the world, listen, I... I <laughs> I may be a white boy, but I ain't stupid, meaning he understand where the true power is in the last days. He understands who you are, Israel, but he ain't going to tell you the devil is slick, man. They slick with their words. Why can't they just tell the people who we are in the last days, right? Um, but go ahead. I know where the power is. I know where the power You think I'm joking? I learned a long time ago about the Divine Nine. That's why I spent so much time at Delaware State campaign and organizing my campaign in Delaware. We see the vibrancy of black culture and history enriching all of American life, all of American life. History that can't be buried because it lives in the soul of this nation. It's who we are. It's who we are. It matters. As the gospel song sings, We've come too far from where we started. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Folks, folks, I don't think the good Lord brought us anything this far to leave us behind. We just have to remember. We just have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. And there's nothing beyond our capacity. Nothing, Stop nothing, right nothing. So happy Black History Month. Nah, the hell with you. The hell with your lies. You understand that? Okay. Yeah, we are not um, happy, go lucky Americans. You understand? But we are people that have a nation. We are people that have an origin. And we are people that have a land and power within this earth. We God's chosen people. We are the nation of Israel. The hell with what these guys talking about, man. He don't want to tell our people the truth, but he want to tell you, yeah, I know the power. I know the divine nine. Hey, um, hey, Ephraim, can you look up that divine nine real quick for our people? And while he does that, can somebody grab the uh, book of Galatians? And listen, by the way, if you have not been following um, Yahweh's camp and previous videos, go back and look at the lesson. Um, that was done on there is no jew or greek and then you understand what i mean by this devil right here when this brother puts puts this up just pull up the divine nine and go into 
Um, yeah, let's let's look at this. Hmm. So, what do we got here, right? Um, can somebody get the book of Galatians and chapter 3, verse 28, right? So, if you go back and you look up that, that video, right, you'll get the whole understanding on the Greeks. You'll get the whole understanding on the New Testament to fully understand, you know, who the Greeks are and who the uh, Hellenistic period was talking about, right? Because we got here, the devil got a national pan uh, Hellenic council, right? So let's see what this is talking about. That's basically giving you a background as Greek. So he was identifying with our people as being uh the starters of the fraternities or the greek fashion right which you know we we hold dear to our hearts many of our people man you know what i'm saying i'm in and out of these homes all the time where we got our women that love these fraternities man our men they dancing got the tims on with the paint on their face taking their shirts off and they they going crazy over these greek fraternities but do you really know the history of the Greeks? Do you really know what it means to be of you know, the, the Hellenistic period, right? So can you, whoever has that Galatians real quick, can you read that? This is just to add on to this lesson. This is not what the lesson is, but it's befitting to new news, right? It's the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28. Mm-hmm. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Stop right there. So why didn't he tell them that instead of giving them falsehood? Why did why why would he say, Yeah, I know where the power is, but he didn't he didn't tell them where the power truly is. He didn't give them their God, right? He didn't tell them you are God on this earth. He didn't tell them me. He just said, you know what? I know where the true power is. I ain't stupid. Right? I may be a white boy, but I ain't stupid. But he didn't give you your origin. He didn't give you no commandments. He didn't give you no laws. He didn't give you nothing to separate yourself from that flag. What he said was to continue to serve this nation. I'm going to give you a little crumbs. Hand. There, but continue to serve this nation proudly, right? But uh, uh, you, ready, you ready for me to go ahead back on? Go ahead, my brother. Yep. Yeah. Read it from the top. My bad. I'm breaking up a little bit. My bad. This is the book of Galatians, uh, chapter 3, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Hamashiach, Yahawashah. There you go. So be it. Why didn't he, why didn't he end that on an amen to the people and read that to him instead of giving them the divine nine? Why didn't he say, listen, out of all y'all people out here that started these fraternities, listen here, the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek. Y'all know y'all the Greeks? Y'all know y'all started these fraternities for a reason? Because y'all was held to that council a long time ago by following the Greekish fashions, right? By going in their gymnasiums, by putting yourself in the spirit of sports, in entertainment, that's all we've been attached to is sports and entertainment, right? And pleasing these people. So that's what the devil still wants you to do in the last days. He don't want to give you your place of origin. He don't want to tell you to clean yourself up in the last days, Israel, right? He don't want you to know that you are the true power, that you are the true God upon the face of the earth, man, right? And with that, I want to give all glory and honor to our Heavenly Father and the Heavenly Son, whose name is Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, right? And we're going to keep pushing this truth in the last days, man. So I just wanted to open up with that right there to let y'all know that you got to pay attention to everything in the last days, man. You got to pay attention to the sky. You got to pay attention to the ground. You got to pay attention to the trees, right? You got to look at all of these things that's going on, man, because it's signs and everything that's around us, even the people. Right. The scriptures say gross darkness shall even come upon the people, man, meaning our people will be consumed with wickedness in the last days. Man, we're living in those times. All right. 
So shaping up, man, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. So let's get started with the lesson. All praise to the most high. Well, your house, let me get second Timothy's chapter three. I mean, let me get second Timothy's chapter four, verse three. Salat. Let me do a little reading too tonight. Oh, praise <clears throat> and um somebody let me get first corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16 and uh to verse 17 and when he's done with that if somebody wants to grab isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1 all praise to the most high let's get it come the book of second timothy you said three four right uh, four three, Salakia. Salakia. Uh, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, and that's the time we're in right now, unfortunately. Right? Our people don't want to endure sound doctrine, and that's what this lesson is uh built on right here tonight sound doctrine. Right? We're gonna see for the people if we can make the Bible sing for the people. Can we be a lovely song for Israel right now? Let's see. All right? Can you endure sound doctrine? Can you understand and hear truth as it's presented to you in the last days? Go ahead. Con. But after their own lusts. But after their what? After their own lusts. Right. Many of our people are built on their own lusts. And the most I had to give you and turn you over to your own lust, man. Go ahead. Shall they heap to themselves mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. having itchy ears? Right, and that's many of our people are heaping to themselves in these last days, man. Teachers having itching ears, right? The scriptures say that knowledge, people will go to and fro within the earth in the book of Daniel, and knowledge shall increase, man. If you tell me a greater time in the earth where knowledge is increased before the period we're in right now, hey, I'll listen to you. But you can't show me no other time in the earth where knowledge is, is, is on every platform. Right. It don't matter what they talk about. I don't care if you're talking about the birds, the bees, the, the sky, the water, right? The plants. Everybody got some knowledge of breakdown on even those things, the meats, the food, all these different things, right? It's knowledge everywhere, man. Go ahead. But watch thou, oh Salakia, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. Right. Because many of our people with those itching ears, right? They want to hear everything but the truth. They want to hear everything but correction. They want to hear everything but God's law, statutes, and commandments, which are going to seal his people in the last days. They want fables. They want they want the, the lying lips of the pastor to say, you know what? Hey, come as you are. Eat what you want. Do what you want. You understand? And then in the midst of all that, he's whispering into, you know, your wife behind closed doors, right? In the midst of adultery. In many of these churches, man, you understand? But that's why we got to stand up in the last days to take back what belonged to us. We got to take back the home. We got to tell our mothers, listen, man, stop putting your monies in these churches for naught, right? Because while you're suffering, the pastors are rich. They got these houses. They got these churches all over the earth. But meanwhile, you don't got money to pay your rent. Right. Meanwhile, you lose your job and you want paycheck. You want paycheck away from being homeless without nothing. Can you go to the storehouse? Where's the storehouse at? For the people. Go ahead. But watch thou in all things. Mm -hmm. Endure inflictions. Mm hmm. Do the work of an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Make full proof of thy ministry. Now we're going to stop right there on that, right? So it says, watch all things. And, and part of watching all things is the video that was just up on display, right? For the world to see. Is that um, you're going to find out that Israel is watching all things in the last days. You understand what I'm saying? How many of y'all paying attention to what's going on in the world right now on the earth? How many of y'all are looking at these things that's coming to the earth? How many of y'all are looking at these fires that's taking place all over the earth? How many of y'all are looking at these trains that's mysteriously derailing all over the earth and the chemicals that's being put in the air? 
You understand? These things are going to come back to to haunt us one day. Right. And, and, and the reason why you're going to suffer by these things is because you don't want to endure sound doctrine because you don't want to hear the words of the truth in the last days. Right. You don't want to fast. You don't want to pray. You don't want to keep the laws and the commandments. Right. That's the only way you're going to be sealed in the last days, man. Right. Let me get that uh, first Corinthians chapter nine and verse 16. You understand? Because, you know, my dear brother, um, Officer Ryan, you know, he taught a, a, a powerful lesson, you understand, about the importance of, of placing, you know, the commandments on your doorpost, looking at these things, visualizing the Lord's words on a daily basis and understanding that, right? And, and me as a suffering servant for many years, probably about 13 years, I had this scripture on my bedpost, looking at it every morning. While I was getting ready to go to work, you understand? I got a precept too. When you're done, sure. Go ahead with your precept. Uh, Con, this is Second Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter three, verse one. Said this: Know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Oh man, that's, oh, man, that's beautiful, beautiful right there. <laughs> okay. Verse two: For men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Right. And that's what you see going on in the earth, man. It says, go, go back up real quick, Ephraim up there to the first verse. It says, it says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And that's what we're in now, right? For men shall be lovers of themselves. What do you see in the last days all over Facebook, Instagram? You got grown men. They take more pictures of themselves than women do. They in the script. They in the, they in the mirror. They turn it to the side. They taking them pictures. They got all dressed up and ducked and dipped out got their jewelry on, right? Grown men all over the pictures, all over Facebook, all over the internet for the world to see. Yeah, you 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 serving the Lord, but damn, you know, I see your pictures more than I see women pictures. You understand? Is this about you or is this about the service you're doing for the most high? Who we want to see? I don't care to see. I want to see what you're doing for the Lord. I don't care about your pictures, man. All right? But go ahead, keep going. Where you was at? Come, verse five. Having a form of godliness. Yeah, you got a form of godliness. You know what I mean? You present yourself. And this ain't just the people, you understand, that understand this word, man. This is many of our people because we've been having these records for years, man. You understand? Our grandmother showed us this word. Our, our, our grandfather showed us this word. You understand? So it's no excuse, man. You should you should understand these commandments, these laws deep down in our spirits within itself. Even if you didn't grow up in the church, you know, in spirit that that's wrong what you're doing. You know what I mean? Without that natural affection. You see that? Go ahead. Con, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. From such turn away. We're going to stop right there on that because that could keep going on and on. But the, the Lord said from such turn yourself from that, man. Turn away from these people in the last days that ain't filling themselves with the spirit of the Lord, man. Right. We're supposed to be following his footsteps in the last days. You understand? We're, su we're supposed to be enduring the affliction. You understand? We're, su we're supposed to be putting off the falsehoods. You understand? We're, su we're supposed to be putting off that incontinent spirit, right? You know, being despisers of good things, right? A shalom, a mighty shalom to the sister Tony in the building, right? Go ahead. Hey, let me give another uh, uh, shalom, you know, to the elder. Elder Mac is back in the building. You understand? A brother done uh, came back. He done went through. His things that he went through in the spirit, 
And our brother, our dear brother, Brother Mac, is back with that fiery spirit that he got, man. You understand? He come out there in that chair and, and listen, he showed the world. He showed Esau and everybody that he loved the work and he loved what we're doing. So that's why I'm giving that brother a mighty shout out, uh, a mighty shout out, man. A shout out to you, Elder Mac, because I know you're watching. All praise to the most high. Go ahead. Praise. Oh, that was it on that. First Corinthians chapter nine. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter nine, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For though I preach the gospel, mm -hmm. I have nothing to glory of. Mm -hmm. For necessity is laid upon me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Understand that right there, man. Right? For those that go out on the highways and the byways, right? For those that are sitting at the house and contemplating, you know, we got a lot of keyboard warriors in the last days that think that's doing the work. You understand? They got a lot of knowledge. You see that? They're watching brothers that actually study for years. You know, and they compiling scriptures and they putting it together and they really, you know, they scoffing. They trying to debunk what it is that we doing for the Lord in the last days, which is simply telling our people that we have to return and keep God's law, statutes and commandments. We are not free from the law. You understand that? OK, I was just in a whole heavy discussion with, you know, a bunch of people that felt like, listen, we're free from the law. Are you an Israelite? That's what you are. Hey, well, you teach a gospel of hate. My brother had a nerd to tell me I teach a gospel of hate because I'm an Israelite. Where you're saying we're free from the law, but you wouldn't even know the law. You wouldn't even have the understanding of what the law is, is even representing if you didn't have the Israelites. Because we're the only ones that are bringing this to the forefront in the last days for the people. You cast God's laws away behind your back. You despise God's laws, right? But read that one more time. It says, for though I preach the gospel. Go ahead. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. For though mm -hmm. I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yeah, woe, mm -hmm. it, yeah, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Hey, let that let that let that seal in in brothers' minds that think, yeah, I I did enough in this work. You understand? I've been in the truth for two years, three years. I've been out there reading, holding signs, passing flyers out. So I'm good now, right? The scripture says, "Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel," right? So you drop the you drop the plow. You forgot about your brothers that's on the highways and the byways. You said, let me go ahead and free myself. You know, let me deliver thyself, you understand? And you ain't even done enough within this work, you know, to even, you know, make a make a make an exit outside of what this captivity is because you ain't even taught that ministry, right? So it says, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. I stared at this scripture right here. For 10 years straight, and here I am preaching the gospel to the people. Let me get Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. <clears throat> Salati. The book of Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. What's the gospel? What are we supposed to be doing in the last days? Who are we supposed to be sealing, right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1. Mm -hmm. The spirit the spirit of the Lord God is upon me mm -hmm. because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Mm -hmm. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, mm -hmm. to proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound mm -hmm. to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's what we're doing. When you see brothers that, that, that take up this helm in the last days and go out on the highways and the byways, Hey, we are proclaiming the acceptable year of the Lord. And, in in what? 
and and the day of vengeance of our and, God. And, and we and we telling the people to get ready for the day of vengeance of our God, not everybody's God, of our God, man. Right? Go ahead. To comfort all that mourn. To comfort all that mourn. Where they mourning that? Read the next verse. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. All right, stop right there. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, right? The children of Israel. That's who this gospel is for in the last days, man. It's important to start identifying yourself with who you are and what your nation is in the last days. Hey, the Lord going to separate you anyway, man. Everybody not going to be, you know, together, you know, uh, passing flowers and drinking hot chocolate, walking into the kingdom, okay, into the same gate. Even the children of Israel going to have their own respective gates to walk into, right? Um, somebody want to get the brother's precept right here? Ecclesiasticus chapter 20 and verse 25. Let me buy my pocket for real quick. Hold on a second. Not... <clears throat> This is the book of Syrac. He wants Syrac, right? Yeah, what do you have up there? 20 and 25? Yeah, that's it. Con, right. This is the book of Syrac or Ecclesiasticus chapter 20, verse 25. Mm -hmm. A thief is better than a man that is accustomed to lie. But they both shall have destruction to heritage. Okay. So a thief is better than a man that is a company to a lie. You understand? But they both shall have destruction to an heritage. And in and, 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 and going there, right, that's understanding that our enemies are thieves and robbers. And they are they that took our inheritance for themselves. You understand? So they got to be... You know, in, in taking that inheritance, this is the grace and the power of the Lord is that the curses that he put on us for our disobedience, he's going to put those on our enemies. You understand? Right. Because he filled our cup when we were supposed to be on top of everybody. But he had to give us all of the uncleanness, you understand, of our ways. And that's what this lesson is about. This is about Israel removing the uncleanness from them. And coming back and reverencing who their power is, right? For his name's sake. That's what this work is about. That's why we do what we do. Every man that go on the highways and the byways have built themselves up to go out and proclaim the Lord's name in the last days, right? Yeah, and I just want to just say something. Go ahead, King. Yeah. Delaki, um, yeah, yeah. And even when you go back to that uh Syrac 20 and 25, you know. The, the liar, Yahweh said a liar is like a murderer, mm -hmm. right? If you if you uh, are accustomed to lying, meaning you're a, a habitual liar, right? You're like a murderer. And, you know, uh, that the recompense of murder ultimately is, you know, if you're a murderer, you, you know, you, you got to be put to death. But that thief, you know, that the brother that, you know, he stole something, you just got to even the recompense isn't the same as a murderer right so like if i steal something i just gotta pay it back plus a fifth and i gotta atone right <clears throat> and i'm not i'm not putting uh a, a, a thief as like um some sort of like uh a pass or nothing like that not by any means but you see the the, the difference between he said a thief is better than a man that is a customer lot meaning someone that steals something once or twice he he's better than the one that is a, a a blatant liar or a, a, a brother that's a, a habitual liar but then it says but they both shall have destruction to heritage and even when you go like that that was israel right we lost our heritage whether you was a liar or a thief we lost our heritage we lost our land we lost our our, our, our native tongue our nationality our whole culture so even brothers that's in the sin right as a nation when we are in sin we also lose the things that that uh made us a nation and now we just took on the term black or you know hispanic or native american con that's right that's right all praises to the most are uh, beautiful you got something you wanted to say brother joshua oh no no i was just saying okay. con to what the brother said brother ron brought it out mighty just now 
Okay, all praise to the most high. Right. At any time, if any brother, um, you know, you want to interject or, you know, your precept, you know, and even if you want to bring a precept and expound on it, man, go ahead and do so. OK. Hey, Salakia King. Mm -hmm. uh, just just going back to what you were saying about, uh, you know, people, people, a lot of people got a lot of uh, things to say as far as Israelites going out there, preaching a the word and saying mm -hmm. that we preach hate. I just wanted to bring this precept out right quick. Go ahead. King. This is first John five and three. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So, yeah, um, uh, we, we, we preach in love over here and we preach and keep the commandments. So I don't really see how that's hate. Kay. Hey, and that's there you go. You know, you know why it's hate? Because it ain't for them. You see that? So the same hate that we preaching, it, it wasn't it wasn't hate when we was in bondage. It wasn't it wasn't hate when when we couldn't drink from their water fountain. See that? But they want to drink from the same cup of the Lord that we drink from, right? Con the um to back you up, the Isaiah five and twenty. Okay. Tells you why, tells you why. Go ahead. Read it. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is what this is about, right? We love the scriptures. You see that? That's what this is. That's what this is, man. Go into the scriptures, dissect them. You understand, and 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 present them to the people. You know. It says, Book of Isaiah, chapter five and twenty. It says, mm -hmm. "Woe to them that call they call evil good mm -hmm. and good evil. Mm -hmm. That put darkness for light and the light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter." So that's why they're going to say that if we preach in the laws and we preach in hate. That's right, King. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. All praises, man. You know, and I, that's what I'm that's what I'm looking for on this right here. If you got a precept you want to go into. Hey, man, explain it to the people, man. I don't got to be the only mouthpiece. Explain it to the people. I I got <laughs> I got enough precepts up here. All praise to the most high. Right. Let me get the book of Isaiah 28, verse 9 through 10. All right, let's start out, man. We're going to start out a little, you know, milks and, and, and it's, it's some slices of steak in there for you, too, if you want to chew on that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Mm -hmm. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? That's right. So the people got to start to understand sound doctrine, right? So it says, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine, sound doctrine, right? Go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk mm -hmm. and drawn from the breast. Go ahead. For precept must be upon precept. It said for precept must be upon precept, meaning the law. You must go to the law to understand what these scriptures are. That's the only way you're going to get the understanding and the lot and the knowledge from the most high. Let me get Psalms 119 and 104. Right. So it says for precept must be upon precept. Right. Go ahead. Precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. Line upon line. Go ahead. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Go ahead. For with stammering lips and another tongue mm -hmm. will he speak to his to this people right with stammering lips in another tongue go ahead and bring it out Ephraim. what you got there oh i was just bringing out um you know uh let's see strong's age 3934 la egg i was bringing la out egg. la egg mm -hmm. and it's essentially stammering right mm -hmm. and you know they always Oh, well, why are you guys so mean? And oh, you preach hate and this and that. And it's just, it's crazy because, you know, they're all in their feelings, right? And they're not listening to anything that we're saying. Instead of just standing there, you know, being humble, right? Listen to the words. They want to uh, do the emotional thing, but stammering essentially is, you know, mocking, mm -hmm. you know, talking in a, in a, in a, in a stern tone, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, just bringing it out and sparing not.
That's right. All praise to the Most High. Right. So somebody's got Psalms uh, 119 and verse 104. Also, somebody grabbed the book of Sirach, chapter 51, in verse 23. Con, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 104. Mm -hmm. Through thy precepts, mm -hmm. I get understanding. Right. So going through the scriptures, going into the laws, right, going into the history of the Bible, you understand, um, most people, they read the scriptures, they just read it from cover to cover. So they get the historical portion of the book. Right. But you don't get the total understanding until you can dissect these scriptures and actually go from law to law to understand what law is. You see that to understand what the commandments are, what the judgments are for breaking those commandments. You ain't going to get the total knowledge and understanding unless you can dissect these scriptures and put it together like a nice puzzle. You see that? And that's what we've been commissioned to do in the last days, man. You see that? And that's what this lesson is going to be predicated upon. Making the Bible sing for the people. Making it clean for you in the last days, man. You should appreciate the, this work that many of the brothers bring forth, you know, for the people, man, for edification. Everything is for edification. Everything is for the sanctification of the children of Israel in the last days. But go ahead. Don, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I hate every false way. And that's what we hate. So when you say we got the gospel of hate, no, we hate false ways. We hate what you're doing to the gospel. We hate what you're preaching. We hate what you're teaching, right? You, we hate that you're taking the money from the people and not giving them nothing. We hate that. You understand that? We hate that we're still in captivity and slavery, right? We hate that our people are fine with just calling themselves a color in the crown box, right? We hate that we're still in 2023 knowing that, you know, we got the brother, he got his pants down on his kneecaps, got his jewelry on, his gold chain, hat to the back. You ask the brother who he is. Yeah, I know I'm a god. I know I'm a king. But brother, hey, a, a king got a kingdom. Where's your kingdom at, man? Where's your castle, brother? Where's your land at, man? Where you come from? They ain't got no answers, man. You're going to find out our people have no answers in the last days because why? They're not going precept upon precept. They're not rightfully dividing the word of truth in the last days, man. They don't understand what the stammering lips is. They don't understand that the Lord had to translate this book for his people in the last days to understand it. Right? But go ahead. Con. Uh, thy word is a lamp unto my feet mm -hmm. and a light unto my path. And that's right. And that's what we have, man. So we got our brothers, man. We understand that this word is a guide, that this word is for the children of Israel in the last days to show us where we're going and where we came from, man. Right. We got to remember those days are old. You understand? We got to Nobody's talking to the ancient men no more. Nobody's talking to the fathers and the grandfather. Hell, your grandfathers and grandmothers is damn 30 years old today. That's a shame. You ain't got no ancient people to talk to, man. This generation is finished. Gener gener generation um, Z was a, a couple years ago. You understand? You ain't got much after that, all right? If you got ears to understand that, you know, listen and pay attention. Let me get the book of Sirach, chapter 51 and verse 23. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 51, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Draw near unto me, ye unlearned. Right. Draw draw near unto, unto me. Draw near unto all of these brothers that you see with this wisdom. Draw near unto the brothers that you see that, that even... We're not scared to read the Bible, y'all. We really love our people, man. 
you should appreciate the learning. You should appreciate the time that that brothers is putting in. You understand? Either while they at work, while they at home, taking time from the children to study to show they self approve, to even put together a lesson for you so you can have clear wisdom and edification in the last days. You should be appreciating that. You should be drawn there to hear more of the word. Go ahead. Ye unlearned and dwell in the house of learning. Hey, you got to start to dwell in the house of learning in the last days, man. You got to start to really pick this word up, you know, not for your own benefit, but for your nation's benefit. You understand? We, we try to go on the scriptures just like sins and see what fit us, right? Uh, the Lord talking about me here. I'm going to skip that and go to something else. You know what I mean? God is good all the time. Right, we want to hear that. We want we want to hear smooth words, man. But nah, look your sins in in the face. Look your demons right in the eyes and cleanse yourself in the last days, Israel. That's what this lesson is about. It's about cleansing yourself, right? It's about putting on that spirit of Yahweh, Yahweh shine in the last days, man. Because He's gonna put it in us regardless, man. Right? Rather if you there or not. But keep going. Verse twenty four. Wherefore are ye slow? Mm -hmm. And what say ye of these things? Mm -hmm. Seeing your souls are very thirsty. And you're going to see many of our people are very thirsty right now, man. Our people are thirsty, man. They want Some of our people really want this word. Some of our people really want to know, am I Israel? Is the Lord talking about me? Is he going to seal me in the last days? But you're going to find out if you hear his word, man, you sealed, you sealing yourself. But you got to stay committed to his laws and his commandments. You got to be obedient. You got to take on those sufferings as the Mashiach and did. Right? Go ahead. Uh, verse 25. Mm -hmm. I, op I opened my mouth and said, buy her for yourself without money. Right. This is talking about wisdom. Right? Those that have the understanding. You understand, right? It says, buy her for yourself, talking about wisdom, talking about obtaining wisdom, right? The scriptures say also, buy the truth and sell it not. You're not supposed to get the, listen, you could spend all your coins to buy all of the information. I got tons of books all over here, right? That I that I went, you, you, you understand, through the course of my journeys to pick up and say, you know what? I want to learn this piece of history. I want to get, hell, look, I bought books just for two verses. Yeah, that's going to, that, yeah, that's going to confound somebody that come up with that garbage right there. Let me get this book right here. Okay. Buy the truth and sell it not. It says up, it says, I opened my mouth and said, buy her for yourselves without money. Right? Because we got to obtain this knowledge. These scriptures is here. You can go on your phone. You can put a Bible app up there. You can do all of these great things right now in today's time while you still have time to obtain this wisdom and knowledge without money. But you don't need it. The, the Lord made it so. He, 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 what we see right now, this internet, these platforms, he made it so that he could put the spirit in his people. We can give it to Esau because all of these inventions come from us and they stole it and made it their own. Right. So that's the spirit of the Lord, man. He gave you the time to understand his word in the last days before these missiles hit. Those those that is what you know, you got to be of a willing spirit to want to pick this word up and hear it, though. Right. We're not going to force it on you. You understand? Hey, you got two. Or, you got two or three times for me to come to you, man. And you want to deal with your fooling foolishness, man. I'm out of it. We ain't got no more conversation. You ain't going to stir up my spirit because I'm ready to fight. I'm ready for war. Big con. And then the crazy thing is, it's going to be those same people that are going to be trying to find us when the famine of the word really, really, really hits, right? That's, that's when you right. can't find us on YouTube, when you can't find us on TikTok, <laughs> when you can't find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, none of that. Con, I also got another precept, sure. Go ahead, bring it out. Uh, this is the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 5. Uh, it says, if riches be a possession to be desired in this life, 
what is richer than wisdom that worketh all things. Oh, beautiful, brother. Go ahead and expound on that. Con, so as the brother was saying, um, this is verse 24 saying, and what, what say ye to things, seeing your souls are very thirsty? Um, we see that our people are desirous of the good word and the wisdom um, or the power that the wisdom brings. This verse right here in uh, Wisdom of Solomon is saying that though the world that we live in seems to um, put riches in a high place in their lives, uh, that wisdom itself that worketh all things supersedes all that, supersedes riches or anything that we can desire in this life. There's nothing above that that will get us through these last days. So, um, Con, that's all I have to say about that. Right, and that's beautiful right there, you understand, because, you know, when you go back into Solomon's time, you know, Solomon could have said, Lord, you know, I want I want another castle over here. You know, let me let me build. I'll build you another temple over here. But put me I want me a whole gold building right here for myself. Right. But you know what? He prayed for more wisdom. He prayed for more knowledge and understanding of the word of the laws so that he can do what? So that he can judge Israel in righteousness. Right. So he wasn't grievous to the people. He was so so he could hold back that sword, you understand, from putting it on Israel and judging them unrighteously, like many of our people do. We so quick to see a people see a brother go off or a sister go off, man, and brother put it all on the internet. <clears throat> that ain't judging the people righteously, man. Right? You know, keep some stuff private. You know what I mean? Y'all work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, man. Don't put that stuff out there to confuse the people. You understand? Putting stumbling blocks for the nation of Israel, man. Right? We got to start to learn these commandments for ourselves and these laws and judge the people righteously, right? But um, all praise to the Most High. Beautiful precept, King. Right? Beautiful understanding and edification for the people. Anybody else got anything else? <laughs> With that being said, let me get the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36 and verse 1. All right, let's go into it. All right, the book of Ezekiel for the people, chapter 36 and verse 1. All right. <clears throat> this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Also, though, though son of man, Prophecy unto the mountains of Israel. Well, it says uh, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, right? Go ahead. And we listen through the understanding of precepts. You understand these mountains are talking about men of stature, right? He's talking about uh, people with high degree in Israel. This ain't talking about physical mountains. We got to take the scriptures as twofold, right? The scriptures is physical and it's spiritual. You understand? So it's up to you to go. And seek out these scriptures to see what's physical and what's spiritual from it and take those aspects and, you know, compile it together for your learning so you can know what this is this is even talking about. Right. So it says to prophesy unto the mountains. Right. Go ahead. And say, ye mountains of Israel, mm -hmm. hear the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God. Because the enemy have, have said against you, aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. All right, stop right there. So <laughs> this, is, this is how you know the prideful of, of who we're up against, right? The pride of the nations, our enemies, right? Or, or you don't know who your enemy is in the last days. You think your enemy is solely the brother you know, that's on the corner selling Lucy's with his pants off his butt, right? You think your enemy is a sister that's club hopping and going from man to man, right? That's what you think? No, nah, that ain't that ain't what that ain't what this is solely, right? We do have enemies of our own, but we have to love those two and bring them to the fold. But it says, because the enemy said against you, let me get Nehemiah chapter five, verse nine, real quick, right? So it says 
because the enemy have said against you, aha, he's, he's, listen, surprise, <laughs> hello, I'm here, let me, let me, let me, let me, uh, you know, let me build on your woes and destruction, right, let me celebrate on taking everything from you, Israel, so he said, aha, I'm here, go ahead. Therefore, prophesy, prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord God. All right, stop right there, right? So, you go ahead. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that right there, man. And, I, and, 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 and look, man, you're going you're gonna to find out, man, that many many of these people, man, that's how they come at us, right? You know? That's how they that's how they come at us in the last days, right? Like I'm I'm here, you build them, but I'm gonna still destroy it. I'm gonna take what you got. It's nothing new under the sun. They did the same thing when when we was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They did the same thing when we was in Philadelphia. They did the same thing when we was in Florida, right? The Rosewood situation, all of these different things, man. Surprise. I'm here to take what you got, Israel. You can't have this. Aha. Uh -huh. Is this for you? Nah, this for me. I thought you knew. But go ahead. Let me get Nehemiah 5 and 9. Somebody hold, uh, when he get that, let me get Psalms, the 83rd chapter. Let's see who these enemies are. Are these enemies everybody? Let's see. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Also, I said... It is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God mm -hmm. because the because of the reproach of the heathens, our enemies? Mm -hmm. Right. So it says, ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God? What does the book of Psalms 111 and verse 10 say? Huh? Matter of fact, before you get that, can you grab that real quick? You know, because we're going to let these precepts just fly on 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 demand. Whenever necessary. And if any of the brothers got something they want to go ahead and throw in, man, hey, feel free, brother. I got all night. Ha. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm. Now read okay. that one more time. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is is the beginning of wisdom, right? Understand that, Israel. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. How are we going to fear the Lord? Keep reading. A good understanding have Ooh. all they that do his commandments. Right, so once you start to obtain and know that his commandments and his laws are just and above all things, right? Because he put them here for his people so they can rule it rightly, right? So it says, a good understanding have all they that do not read, not see, not know, but do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. So you must understand that, that that's what you're up against if you're saying you know the Lord in the last days. If you're saying that you know the that you that you you know you got a relationship a close relationship with Jesus Christ in the last days, right? If you're saying that you have a close relationship with who you ignorantly call God with no understanding, right? You got to dwell in the house of learning. That's what this is about tonight, right? So anybody, right? You may be a scoffer up here. You may be. Uh, stuck in 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 the churches with no understanding. Hey, listen, man, come in here, dwell in the house of learning. Go ahead, brother. Hey, yeah, that's, that's spot on, right? So the, uh, I just want to bring these two scriptures out. Go ahead, uh, King. Matter of fact, let me start it. Let me get three scriptures. This is uh, Proverbs nine and nine. It says, "Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning." Right, so. Uh, the brother is right is right on top of things when he's uh, uh, teaching to the people uh, uh, the reason why we do these things, right? It's, it's because we want to increase in our knowledge, 
right? And of course, everything that we gauge our knowledge by, we all come from different walks of life and different mindsets and different uh, understandings. But at the end of the day, like our mannerisms is different, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we keep these laws, right? And that's the, that's the uh, metric we live by, right? So it says, give un instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser, right? So wise men, they always increase their learning, right? We always increase our understanding and our knowledge, wisdom and understanding, right? We don't take our hand off the plow after two years, like the brother was bringing out earlier. We actually was bringing out, you know, brother's been, you know, in this walk for a few years and they just kind of just let go. That's why it says endurance until the end, right? You getting that knowledge into the end, right? You got you to gotta keep that same zeal when you first came in, every day to the day you die. That's why it says, he that endure to the end, the same will be saved, right? Then it says, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. Then it says, verse 10, the fear of the most high or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So as Israelites, we're the holy, right? We're the set apart, right? We're the people that's Kodash. Right, so we have to in, increase our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, which goes back to the law, right? And then I'm a, I'm a further substantiate that verse eleven, it says, "For by me thy days should be multiplied." That's how you live long, right? Your your life increases and your 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 days increase by keeping the commandments and these laws and statutes, and not just saying it and knowing it, but applying it to your daily life. Right. And it says, and the years of thy life shall be increased. And that goes to that Baruch 4 and 1. Right. All that keepers shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So so we teaching how to uh how to increase one's life, which you know, if 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 you're really being technical, and just to break it down, the Bible is the only is the only, I repeat, the only um solution for the black Hispanic. Native American man, woman, and child. And I'm going to yield on that. Con King, all praise to the most high. That was beautiful, man. You know, and you see, that's why, that's why we do what it is that we do. And that's why we come up here, you know, um, with the amount of people that we do, because, you know, this ain't, this ain't just about me explaining and expressing, um, my train of thought and what i've learned throughout the years but this is edification for the nation of israel you understand so um we all have an input in this work you know and if you're striving for for, for perfection in the last days and you're trying to put on you know this seal of serving the lord man hey listen your knowledge is needed all your words are needed all your information is needed man the, the lord is speaking you know, through you, you know, once you receive this information, man. I had, somebody got something they want to say? Yeah, Salakia, I got a precept, King. Uh, Go this is the book of Sirach, chapter 1, verse 11. The fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. So, you know, basically, you know, fearing the Lord, uh, keeping the commandments, um, you know, it's not grievous to us. Um, it actually strengthens us, and uh, it's it's our power, you know, of fe uh, fearing the Lord, keeping these commandments. I yield on that. That's right. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, can I get um, Psalms 83, verse 1? We're going to go to verse 7 on that. It's a lot, dude. And... Um, I have somebody grab wisdom of Solomon in the second chapter. <clears throat> right. So this is the book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse one. Right. So it says a song of Psalms. Right. It says, uh, keep not thy silence, O power, and hold not thy peace. And be not still, O power, O God, right? We're going to get into that God right there for the people to understand that, you know, um, you got to know what God you're calling on. You know, you just can't say God loosely in the last days with no understanding, right? But it says, 
Verse two, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. And you see that that's what we're up against every day. We go out on the highways and the byways and we show the people what it is that we're doing. Right. They they show that they hate us for the wisdom, for the knowledge that we that we come out with. Right. Because we come out and we stand up for our people in the last days, they take it as hate speech. Right. They mark us as 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 terrorists. Right. And all types of stuff. Right. But we family men. You understand that we went through our school system. <laughs> right. We accepted uh, your your uh, pale face, white image of the Messiah. We've accepted all these things that y'all put before us. But the Lord have sealed us in the last days to understand what we're supposed to have from the beginning. Right. And verse three says. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. What is the crafty counsel? When you go into our neighborhoods and you look at where we live, you look at the drug infested neighborhoods, you look at their programs, right? You look at you look at all of the things they've injected us with throughout the course of time. You look at the food of today. You look at the water of today, right? You look at the sky. You can even see a difference in the sky from when it was 1980. You understand that? Everything has been changed because of the enemies to do what? Further pollute God's people, to further destroy us so we wouldn't wake up, so we wouldn't rise and come to this knowledge that we have today, to be able to display to the people openly and freely and make it plain, right? So it says against thy hidden ones. Who are the hidden ones, right? They hid our Messiah from us. They hid, they hid our, our king, our true king. And what he looked like, what he taught, who he died for. They hid all those things from us. Right? Verse 4. It says, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Your name means more to these people than anything. But you would rather uphold what? Divine nine. You would rather uphold being a Gentile. You would rather uphold simply being a black man or a nigger, right? Or a spick or a native, a savage, an Indian. You would rather uphold these things versus being the children of Israel in the last days, right? Who have bewitched you, right? Who have taught you this falsehood? That's who you should be upset with. Don't be upset with us for teaching the truth. Be upset with these people right here for telling you lies. Right? Go ahead, Yashawan. Shalom, shalom. Con, uh, yeah, I got a uh, <clears throat> quick precept to what you was bringing out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like the brother was saying, like, you know, most of our people, they, they comfortable with being called proverbs and bywords, you know. So this is the um, book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. <clears throat> it says, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's credit. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. So the Lord said, our people don't even consider. So like the brother was saying, like most of our people think that we be teaching hate because we trying to tell them their true nationality. But most of our people don't even want to hear it. They could care less about being an Israelite. Like the brother said, they, they comfortable with being a cut out of crayon box. They comfortable with being a property of Spain, right? And they minds, they're like, I'm a king. I'm an Israelite. What, what they got to do with me? How that's going to pay my bills? I ain't going to put no money in my pocket. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna call myself what the white man called me because he the one that's putting money in my pocket, right? So our people could care less about you know who they are according to the Bible, but that's all I had on that. That's right. That's beautiful. Hey, can you uh, Salat there? Can you read that one more time and 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 read the next verse too? In that Isaiah uh, chapter mm -hmm. one, 
<clears throat> Con, this Isaiah 1 and 3. Mm-hmm. It says the ox know of his owner and the ass his master's crib. Right. So but, we, we have two animals, right, that understand where they come from. We have two un- we have two animals that understand where to return to if they get lost, right? But it said the ass is master's crib. Hey, when Israel speak in modern day, we say, look, where you, where you going? Where you going, brother? You on the block, you on the corner, you just got finished doing whatever you was doing. Hey, look, man, I'm going to the crib, man. I got to get ready to eat. We always talk like this, y'all. This is who you are. Um, so it said the ass is master's crib. Go ahead. It says, but Israel doth not know. My mm-hmm. people doth not consider. Go ahead. It says, ah, sinful nation. Mm. A people laden with iniquity. A people laden with iniquity. A people laden with sins, right? Go ahead. It says, a seed of evildoers. Mm Mm-hmm. Children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. Mm-hmm. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. Mm-hmm. They are going away backward. Right. And 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 these these you became evildoers, you became corruptors, right? You became those that would forsake who your power is and what his name even represents. Why you even Israel, right? Why the Messiah came? You're going to begin to hate these things because you're going to be in the midst of your enemies, right? So it says you're going to go away backwards, right? Because we were supposed to be the head of this thing, right? But we became the tail for breaking God's law, statutes, and commandments. So now we're on the bottom of society. So who are we following in the last days, Israel? We're following the heathens. You're polluted because you followed all of the heathen ways, right? All of your customs, all your traditions, all your holidays, right? All your hella days that you that you that you celebrate, man, that are, are no value. The most high don't see that. He don't hear your falsehood, man. So when are you gonna return back to who you are? Right? Go back um, to that Psalms 83. Beautiful precept, King. All praise to the Most High. What verse you want, King? Um, I think I stopped at, um, you could go to verse 5, right? Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 5. Mm-hmm. For they have consulted together with one co- consent. Mm-hmm. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom. And the Ishmaelites mm-hmm. of Moab mm-hmm. and the and the Heg, Heg, Hagar Hagarines Hagarines mm-hmm. Salakia. Mm-hmm. Go praise. Uh verse seven, Jabal mm-hmm. and Ammon mm-hmm. and and Amalek, mm-hmm. the Philistines mm-hmm. with the ha- inhabitants of Tyre. Salakia. So pause right there. So all of these right here would be your heathen nations. Right. As such, I know a lot of times y'all see us out here. We banging on, you know, the so-called white man, that pink flesh entity. Right. We out here. We banging hard on them. But look, that's most of the time. That's all we see. Scriptures say that Judah would be in in their their neck would be in the hands of their enemies. You understand? And so that's why we have such a close proximity to those that hate us, which uh, primarily would be those of the so-called Edomites, right? And understand this, we're not ignorant of understanding that all these nations have mixed themselves together. No different than Israel have mixed themselves, right? So we're not just putting a bold claim out there saying that Edom or the Edomites is only the so-called white man that we see walking up and down the streets of America today. But no, we understand that they have many fashions and 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 traits and 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 sex, right? Or or little crews and cliques that they have amongst themselves, right? Many different, you know, uh, trees branched off from who Edom or the Edomites represent because that's what they did. They mixed themselves in 
with the people so you wouldn't know that was that crafty council they didn't want you to know who they was so by them taking your identity they put themselves in place they remove lands they switch you know certain certain uh maps around to further confuse you so you have no idea you think you're a gentile forever and they uphold themselves you know the amaleks right they uphold themselves as being god's people in the last days they got one tribe over there that they saying is israel right but you got 12 tribes they still can't explain that to this day you understand that but y'all keep sending y'all money over there to them people right y'all need to take your money in these churches stop sending it to israel to those people over there that ain't never did you no good they call you goy okay they call you dogs and and you're nothing they understand the scriptures better than you do so when you're going to start putting your money with your own people how about stop sending your money to them send your money to people that's claiming to be god's chosen people in the last days and went through the sufferings went through the slavery went through the captivity went through all of these persians to cleanse ourselves to be able to do this work for you right now as babes in the last days all praise to the most high right let me get wisdom of solomon in the second chapter <clears throat> while he's getting at somebody let me get obadiah right we're gonna go through a list a lot of you know i know we got some heavy gunslingers in here with these scriptures you understand the word in the last days but we got people that ain't they don't know also you got many other people they don't know a lot of these scriptures we going into man so you know understand the, the, the scriptures in in the spirit that's being taught right now all right it's a lot kid king which one did you want first verse one Con. wisdom of solomon right there go ahead Con. the book of wisdom of solomon chapter two verse one mm -hmm. for the ungodly said reasoning with themselves mm -hmm. but not aright mm -hmm. our life is short and tedious right so you got to understand that the devil understand that he got a short time to lure you in to his grasp right to take your blessings from you right to pollute you in this life in this earth he understand he got a short time to play with you so he understand that his time is short and tedious right these heathen nations the enemies even our people you want to be ungodly this is your lot go ahead our life is short and tedious mm -hmm. and in the death of a man there is no remedy mm -hmm. neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave and right we know through the spirit of the mashiach yahweh man he returned from the grave man resurrected in the spirit you understand so they don't know they don't know this word they don't know these records they didn't know that our true savior was going to have to come and present himself unblemished teach the nation of israel to repent and then put his life on the line for those he loved of his own kinsmen of his own nation right that suffering servant for the people okay. you understand go ahead uh, salakia they um you know one thing about them is you know they don't go past the torah right so they they keep themselves in the first five books and they don't you know they don't go into the prophecies they don't go into uh they barely go into the new testament you know they think some real nasty stuff of the of of, of the hamashiach which is mm -hmm. madness to me right mm -hmm. they don't know you know the that luke you know it was talking about prophecy and was written before matthew and like they don't they don't know any of these things right it says not to call another person another another man master yet they call all of their rabbis rabbis right they're just all backwards that's right that's right beautiful uh for we are born at all adventure and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been <laughs> For the breath in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart, mm -hmm. which being extinguished 
our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air. All right, stop right there, right? Somebody give me the book of Obadiah chapter one, verse one, right? So in understanding that, man, it, it said they're going to have smoke in their nostrils and they're going to be as ashes, right? And you read through the scriptures and the precepts, you could go back, you know, it's too much to compile. But listen, go and read the books of Malachi, the fourth chapter, right? Go ahead and understand that the children of Israel are going to walk through fire in the last days, man. You understand? And we're going to have we gonna have hundreds of people that are going to be dying on our left side, thousands on our right side. You understand? But those that be saved and sanctified and endured in the end, right, they're going to walk through that fire, man. They're going to walk through that purging and that affliction that's going to come because they're going to see that, listen, man, this flesh is nothing. It's the spirit that's in there. No flesh and blood is going to enter into the kingdom to come. You understand that? So this flesh, what does that mean? This flesh is nothing. What you look at in the mirror and see every day is nothing. What you take your selfies of and, and flaunt yourself, your body, right? You think you're beautiful. You think you all that. Hey, man, you vanity in the eyes of the Lord, man. Beauty is vain. Get over yourself. You understand? You Israel. You're supposed to look a certain type of way. You're supposed to be beautiful. You're supposed to know that, man. But you forgot. Right. You forgot you, 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 you flaunting yourself for Esau's kingdom, but you ain't learned to put on the beauty of the most high yet. You ain't learned to kill yourself yet. You got to kill yourself with this work. Go ahead. Con and Salagia, just to uh, prove what you were saying, you were saying the thousand were going to fall. Right. Let's, let's go ahead and get it. Con, I'll start at verse one on uh, Psalms 91. It says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high like we feel you know it's crazy because you know we, you know we, we're doing this walk we're, we're trying to keep the commandments to the best of our abilities right and i sometimes i feel like we are literally in a secret place right and then we try to share it with people and they turn a cold shoulder to us you know they ignore us they cuss us out you know they dance in front of us with bacon you know different silly shit right but I feel like we are in a literal secret place, right? Because of the most high. It's like, okay. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence, we're dealing with all that now. He shall cover thee with feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. We going through a lot of destruction right now. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I mean, that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you know, put all your trust in the most high and he will make sure that you see only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Mm. All from trusting in your creator. Hey, hey yeah, that's, I was going to say, that's... <clears throat> hey, Rom, step in for me for a second. Come, come. Um, yeah, I was going to say, when Ephraim was bringing out uh, how, you know, we're in a, um, like, we're, we're set apart, right? And uh, if, if if you don't feel like that, if you feel like you're a part of the world, right, you might want to reconsider your uh, your daily activities and daily things. Like when you start coming in this truth, you literally die in the in the ways of the world, right? I always look at it as like the matrix and being plugged and unplugged, or being in a a, a position where you're like literally kadash. That's what it means to be holy. It's to be Kadash, which is set apart. And, and <clears throat> you know, it's 
it's like it's it actually feels good when you really understand like what's on the table right about the the nation or the 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 ways of the world being uh i guess you could say hold on so like yeah getting the call uh as you was as you can see the ways of this world and how it's literally uh messing our people up right uh the scripture says uh where is that scripture that says uh, uh do not do not follow a multitude to do evil <clears throat> you see what i'm saying and so when you understand like our uh our plight is really is really a a beautiful thing that we're not a part of the world that we're not a part of the ways of Babylon. Like Revelation 18 and 4 says, come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins. Right? That's what it means to be holy. That's what it means to be out of this world and not of the world and losing your life to gain it. Yeah, I wish I said, you know, he that loses his, his life was going to gain it, right? <clears throat> and he that seeks his life is going to lose it. Why? Because you want to play the fence. A lot of times our people... They know the truth. They know the understanding. They they it, it, it makes sense. It clicks, but they still have they uh they foot back in America, back in Babylon. You know they got their eye looking back. They like Lot's wife. You know they are looking back. You know they're trying to move forward, but they're looking back. And you're never going to get the kingdom that way. You're never going to be accepted by your house side that way, because you never fully committed to this walk, and it's not. It's not uh, it's not an easy walk uh, if you're going to play the fence. You know, it's actually harder because you're you're putting on a facade and that's like, now nah, I got to be an Israelite on Fridays and Saturdays. And then Monday through Friday, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm whoever I am. Right? I just want to just make brothers and sisters understand that, <clears throat> you know, if it's uh, and I'm dealing with a cold, so Salaki, but um. You know, brothers to understand that and sisters to understand when you come in this walk, the most high don't want nobody half stepping. You make sure you go all the way in or don't do it at all. I'm going to yield on that. Hey, Salaki, if I could say something, because that was something strong that you said right there, King. Uh, as far as like this truth and, uh, you know, knowing that you're an Israelite is very similar to the movie The Matrix, because uh, if you look back at that movie, you know, there was there was people in that movie that didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to go outside the matrix. They wanted to constantly live inside the matrix. And uh, even the one dude that turned on him in that movie, he was like, look, I don't even want to remember nothing. I don't even want to know what it was like living outside the matrix. It's almost like metaphoric or parabolic to um, uh, to our people. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. once you've ate that sweet bread of Egypt, once you've ate that sweet bread of America, our people they want to they want to constantly you know live in that in that heathen way we want to constantly live uh as americans uh live as we were living as with the egyptians um and coming into this truth you got to put all that stuff away um and you got to you know you got to tap out of the matrix and, and that's that's powerful uh, uh uh when you when you when you put it like that right brothers don't want to remember and that's what our forefathers did you know when they took on the ways of the heathen they literally did. They wanted to be plugged back into the matrix and do the assimilation of the Greeks and take on the ways of Babylon and take on the ways of the Persians, take on the ways of the Romans. And ultimately, we're taking on the ways of the Americans right now, you know. Con, I got a, a precept to what y'all talking about as well, Matthew. Con, bring it out. Um, this is Yahweh Shah's words, this book of Matthew 13, chapter 13, verse 22. Uh, this is just a parable of the sower, but to go along with what you are saying, it says that he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. So you have someone who has come to this truth, they come to this knowledge of maybe who they are, uh, who Yahweh Shah is to, is to him or her, and who the Most High is to Israel. And it says, in the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. So again, just to go along with what y'all are saying, how you might have people who hear the word, who uh, come to this knowledge, but 
through just living the life and um, going through the temptations of the world, they choke it and you end up with that form of godliness that people are walking with where you're one foot in, one foot out. So, yeah. Come, come, come. That's right. All praise to the most high, man. You know, your brothers are spot on. You know what I mean? And 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 that that's why that's the beauty of us coming together in the last days, man. You know, that's the that's the beauty of of these lessons, you know, for the nation, you know, in the last days, man, to, to let you know that, you know, what if you're suffering, you know, in the spirit, you know, um, if you if you fall, you you falling out, you know, you got struggles with with sins or you know you just you just trying to figure out how to be a better servant you know hey look you got you got family out here you know that that actually take the time and the dedication out of the day you know out of the week you know what i'm saying where you know we all got hard days and hard weeks you know but you got a you got a, a small remnant of people who are looking at these words for truth in the last days, you know, that are looking at the signs that are coming, you know, in the last days, man. So, you know, lean on your brothers, man. Lean on your sisters, you know, with the with the knowledge in the last days, you know what I mean? Get them precepts together, man. We got sisters that are very knowledgeable, you know, within, within the nation of Israel, you understand? And, you know, sisters got to start leaning on sisters, man, to teach righteousness, you know, to remove, you know, the the confusion, you know, and start to service men that are actually, you know, performing these works in the last days, man. But that was beautiful. All praise to the most high, man. Right. So we got a thousand out of fall. Right. At thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee, O Israel, if you keep these commandments and these laws, man. Think about that. You see that? You're going to be able to walk through the fire. You're going to be able to see your enemies being wasted away, being destroyed, right? So go ahead and go back to the book of Obadiah. Con, the book of Obadiah, verse uh, chapter one. Well, this is only one chapter. Hello. Uh, verse uh -huh. one. The vision of Obadiah. Did, did you want me to start at verse one, King? Mm -hmm. Okay, come. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We concerning have who? Concerning Edom. So we just read about Edom, right? And the other nations, right? Over there in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter. But it's talking about Edom here. Because you're going to realize that we're going to be in the grips of Edom and Esau, their nation in the last days. They're going to be the ruling class, right? Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom, mm -hmm. we have heard a rumor from the Lord mm -hmm. and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Mm -hmm. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Hey, look, man, look at our people. Are they ready to rise up against Edom right now? Hell no. No, nah, man. La -a. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. They turning up, man. They drink. Yeah, they they eating fake meat right now. GMOs and, and, and all types of stuff that's, that's being 3D printed in their lives. Right? You go over there and look up Israel since y'all sending y'all money over there. They done created a whole uh, fake laboratory to create fake meat for you. See that? So while they buying up all of the farmland over here, the Chinese, the China man got them. Bill Gates, he got them. The real farmers ain't around here no more, Israel. So where's your food coming from? Where's your drink coming from? Something to think about. They too busy defending them. That's right. They too, they too busy saying oh no leave leave spider-man alone they think hey they think hey, every, every 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 uh you know edomite or so-called you know white boy as uh the president said there that that uh 
Yeah, they they a friendly neighborhood Spider Man. They came here to save you. No, they here to destroy you. They here to take what you got. They here to make sure that you don't obtain this mercy, this this grace, this blessing, this kingdom that was for you. But Khan, behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Mm. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Hey, look, and if you go on any of uh, any Israelites platforms and look, man, we telling these devils, look, man, you come out the caves. You come out of Georgia, Russia. Hello. Who are you? Right. And if you could pull up real quick, Ephraim, um, and while you look for that, I'll, um, I'll continue reading. But pull up the Caucasus Mountains real quick for the people. I think they might want to see Barney Rubble, Fred Flintstone, where they come from. Who are they? Right? Why did they make these places? Why did they make these cartoons for you to look at as kids, right? Just go if you can go to just some images real quick of the, the Caucasus, right? So you see the Caucasus Mountains, it's up very high. They dwelt in many holes, right? A good movie for you to go look at and search, by the way, is um Catching Fire. Go look at Catching Fire and see what these people was dealing with, right? Let's see if they if they show it. it, it you see that it's a wasteland. There's nothing here, right? But keep keep going down a little bit. Oh, that's that's all they all right so we don't worry about it just click off that and by the way these are the same people that dwelt in mount Seir, right if you if you got to go and look up um you know mount Seir and in, in in the different locations these people always love the rocks right go ahead yashwan yeah, I was gonna say um Petra too. If you look up uh Petra. And Petra, right. That's right. So let me get verse 18. Con. <clears throat> and the house of Jacob shall be a fire. Right, and that's what you see before your eyes this very day, right? You see men of the Lord that's out here that are taking up the helm of being from Jacob in the last days. We're taking our name Israel back from these people that took it, right? We're taking our commandments back. We're taking the covenant back, right? And I'm waiting for the day that we get ready to take the kingdom back, as the scriptures say band together and take back what belongs to us this is our land right even though we're out here in 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 the americas understand this this is our land first you're gonna fight for it or you're gonna keep laying down go ahead con and the house of jacob shall be a fire mm -hmm. and the house of joseph a flame mm -hmm. and the house of esau for stubble yeah, you're going to be ashes, right? Wisdom of Solomon. You're going to be ashes. That's it. Because, because you, you, you wanted to celebrate over the children of Israel, you said, aha, right? You said, yeah, we got you. Go ahead. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. Mm-hmm. And there shall not be any 
remaining of the house of Esau. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh hath spoken it. There you go. For the Lord hath spoken it, right? Yahweh. You understand that? We're not, we not talking about nobody else. We're not talking about no foreign knowledge and foreign names. You despise that name. You hate that name. Even our own people, right? You better start learning what these these uh, words are that you uphold for your language. You better start breaking down and deciphering what God is and Lord and what uppercase is and all these different things that they put here to confuse you. You just say, "Oh yeah, you know, don't take the don't take the Lord's name in vain." Well, you never even learned the Lord's name. You never um, even learned God's name. You don't even know what it means. But go ahead. Go back to the wisdom of Solomon. Go ahead, Joshua. You got something to say? Oh, no, nah, man. I was just um, I was just thinking, man. I've been looking at this for the last couple of days. Um, I felt like the Most High revealed something to me the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, being that Purim's coming up, you know, I've been reading through Esther a lot. And uh, mm. I had happened to read through the editions of Esther mm. and uh, chapter 16 uh, in the editions of Esther, Esther, chapter 16, verse 10, it says, for Amon, a Macedonian, the son of Amadatha, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood and far distant from our goodness and as a stranger received of us. I almost was thinking like, man, you know, um, in the in the in the in the regular Esther, you know, it says that Haman was a um, was a a, a, a a Gagite or a Jadite. And yeah. we know that goes back to the tribe of Amalek. But in the addition of Esther, it's calling him a Macedonian. So being that we're on the the the, the subject of Esau, it's almost like the Amalek. Is which is the chief and dukes of Esau, and we know the Macedonians were like the chief, some of the chiefs and dukes of uh, the Grecians. It's almost like they're one of the they're one in the same. You know what I mean? Hey, Salakia, um, yeah, you can use that as well to prove that Alexander the Great or the Crete was indeed an Edomite because he was a Macedonian, and like you said, he's an Agagite. And so like you, the Agagites go back to Amalek or the, the so-called white man. So, yeah, huh. we could do that on another topic or another day out because I was looking into that uh, as well. And then going into that, you definitely could showcase uh, how Alexander, Alexander and Philip, the Macedonian, Alexander's father, uh, King Philip, the Macedonian, they, they converted to being Greeks. Right, but they were Edomites or the Salaki. No, hey, Kong. Like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That goes into them uh uh being uh being um Greeks and how those those uh those Jaff that's how you can tell the Japhites uh in the lands of Japhet and the difference between them and those Greeks that uh, uh that were Edomites. Con, con. Hey, Con, that's beautiful right there. And, that, and, and you know what? That's what lets you know that brothers is on their homework and due diligence in the last days, man, because you're going to find out that, um, you know, uh, <laughs> hey, look, you got people in today's time, modern modern time, right? You can look this up for yourself if you, if you got time to research and do your due diligence that... Um, you got many people that try to say that Alexander was a melanated brother. He was a he was a so-called black man, right? And if you also look it up, they're also saying that they they that they found this tomb in Cleopatra in I think Memphis somewhere, right? So, like the brother said, that's a, it's another topic for another day more spiritual breakdowns and in understanding to clarify the confusion in the last days so a hey, beautiful precepts king all oh, praise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right 
so let's go back to the wisdom of solomon um chapter two let's read verse five i mean verse four and five um yeah let's just stick around here for a second and if somebody wants to hold and grab uh the book of judas chapter five it's gonna all line up together right the book of wisdom of solomon chapter two verse four Mm -hmm. and our name shall be forgotten in time mm -hmm. and no man shall have our works in the rem in remembrance right and that and that's what you get from the book of obadiah that you just read right it, it, it says that you know that that there should be no more remaining of the house of esau you see that so it says our name shall be forgotten in time right it's no way in the world you look around and you see all of these heathens and these nations that ruled over us on this side of the world and you think that that could be something that's so but no the most high is going to bring it you know to fruition in the last days these people are going to be no more they're going to be forgotten your children will no longer know okay uh captain kirk okay go ahead <laughs> uh and no man shall have our works in remembrance mm -hmm. and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud mm -hmm. and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof for our time is a very shadow that passeth away mm -hmm. and after our end there is no returning for it is fast sealed man no man. it's fast sealed mm -hmm. yeah 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 we're gonna seal this up quick for y'all man to know that the lord ain't playing it's fast sealed so that no man cometh again right verse six for it is fast sealed that no man cometh again mm -hmm. come on therefore let us enjoy the good things that are present Mm -hmm. and let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth right and that's what they've done to our people you see that they've misused us they got us in all these entertainments they got our music they got all of this stuff to plague our minds in the last days right so they're using what was given to them to further confuse you but that's why the lord got to speed up the time for the elect's sake right so he's speeding all of this up for you so you should be appreciating when you look out and you see that it, it's still so-called winter time, but you see it feel like summer out here. You got to start appreciating and knowing what time you're in. Go ahead. Con, let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments mm -hmm. and let no flower of the spring pass by us right they checking it all out man they saying you know what man the flowers is coming and hey, we getting ready to be out here running with no shirt on getting burnt up by the sun <laughs> <laughs> they ready they ready for their judgment and spirit but we not ready for our redemption our people are just you know uh waddling away you know and 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 just riding esau's coattail man but you ain't riding on the fringes you ain't riding on keeping the laws, man. Right? Go ahead. Let me get jump the first 10 on that. Get your precept. Con, did you um hit Isaiah 66 yet? Um la. Okay, con. This is Isaiah 66, verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that which is, which I delight not. Go ahead. Um, that, that was, um, that was it. Uh, unless you made five. Nah, go ahead. Go ahead and explain why you brought that precept. Okay. Con, I brought that precept out because of our people. We're here, mm -hmm. we're calling them, you no know, saying the most high has given us the strength and his word to call them to to his to his word, giving mm -hmm. them a chance to repent and turn from their evil ways. Mm -hmm. But not like when we're out there on the streets and just like other camps, we're out there on the streets, they just walk by like 
like we're trash on the side of the road, not paying attention. They they rather do everything that the Most High delight not in, and continue to choose evil. That's right. I rest hot. I'll pray to the Most High. Beautiful precept and explanation, King. And that's that goes into what this lesson represents right here about the cleansing of the nation and coming back, you know, to to your your true your true hood and, and not falsehood, right? Go ahead, Ephraim. Con. Verse 10. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. So this is the ungodly right here. This is how you know who we're dealing with. Because when you look at our people, we are the representation of what a poor righteous man, you know, could be in any 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 land that you go to, rather than America, China, Russia, right? Afghanistan. I don't care where you go. When you when you see the melanated being, you understand that 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 comes from you know the nation of Israel, God's chosen seed, that you know that that we are oppressed people, that we would that we would be in bondage and be poor, and our riches and golds and things would be translated to another kingdom. So it says, let us oppress the poor righteous man. So they already know you poor, right? They don't care you oppressed. They saying, look, let us go ahead and do it. Hey, listen, they studied these scriptures more than our people have. That's why we, you know, as as men, you know, in the last days have to come and study these scriptures 10 times more than the heathen. You understand? To be able to debunk any any and everything that they bring at us, you know, out there on the streets, man. You know, the people should really give us a little more credit than what they do knowing we go out there and we just ready to deal with any spirit at any given time. You know, we don't go out there with a playbook already. We just go out there with what the spirit of the Lord put in us, right? Go ahead. Con, let us oppress the poor righteous man. Mm -hmm. Let us not spare the widow, mm -hmm. nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the aged. Right. So they don't care about you as a man. They don't care about the women, the widows that have lost their men. And they don't even care about the ancient of us, the gray hairs, the wisdom. Right. That's why they took you out the house. They said, we don't we got to separate this union. We don't want these gods waking up. So let's take the man out the house because they knew, you know, the Lord will put that fire in the men in the last days to bring back this nation. Right. Women understand this. We love you. We appreciate you, but you're here for comfort, right? The Lord said that you would be a pillar of rest, right? The Lord said that the woman would be a tower against death. Understand what that truly means, man. You give comfort, you give rest, you give love, you give patience to your king when he come home, man. Not stress, right? Not duties of work. You understand? But compassion and love, man. Understanding. We need each other, man. Stop separating the home in the last days. Right? Go ahead. God. Let our strength be the law of justice. It says, let their strength be the law of justice. Right? All of their falsehoods would come with that law of justice. If you got time, hey, go into the, what the law of justice represents. Right? Not right now. For the sake of time, but you know, y'all do your own research and due diligence of this law. Just pull that up and highlight the law of justice and what that represents. Go ahead. For that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn. And you know what? They are lying and waiting. They on every corner we go on. Right, they going. Hey, look, man, Esau and these so and these these um these 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 uh, uh evangelical races pastors that don't want to give you your knowledge in the last days. They going from state to state. They burning the highways up too. I thought you knew, right? Satan's ministers is on the highways too, bringing out their truth. So how much more are we supposed to represent? the will of the lord in the last days man 
hey, we need more servants. We need more fruit. We need more laborers. That's what we're going out here crying for, man. We're waiting on that righteous number to be sealed. We're not playing. Go ahead. Because he is not for our turn. Mm -hmm. And he is clean contrary to our doings. Mm -hmm. He upbraideth us with our offending the law. Right. They offend the law. They eat raw meat. Right. They sleep with dogs and animals and kiss them all in the mouth. You understand? We don't do that as a people. You, you see that? We don't put the cat on the counter while we cooking dinner. That shit is nasty. <laughs> you know, you know, you feeding the dog, you know, you got them licking all on your fingers, and then you go ahead and you keep on cutting up the onions and tomatoes, making salad and stuff, talking about you eating good. They making cat souffle. Right. Try to take it. Wait. <laughs> We're, we're, we're different. We're different species. We're different beings, man. We're not the same people. We got to stop with that, man. We don't we don't have the same blood. We don't have the same complexion. We don't even be, we can't even stand in the elements the same. Precept. Bring it out. Okay, Con. This is the book of 1st Maccabees. Chapter 3, verse 48. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen sought to paint the Im paint the likeness of their image. Give me the, and that's what right. go ahead, brother. You gonna bring it out? La, la, you, you got it out. Yeah, so the brother brought that precept out because when you go into your Bibles, your modern day. Uh, churches and everything like that you'll see the figurines not of your own flesh and blood but of the heathen but of the enemy but of the nations that despise who you are right that look upon you and know that you god right the pope go down and he bows between the 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 knees and the feet of the black madonna right so they understand who you are but you got to understand who you are in the last days you understand? You got to start to pick up and say, if he bowed down to that image, I must be important. I must be special. I must be somebody of antiquity. Right? Your, 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 your time didn't start in 1948. Okay? Or, or in 17, uh, you know, 76. Okay? Excuse me, not 1948. That's the heathen's date. But 17, you know, 46... Or any time where they started their independence in the 1700s, right? You got to understand that. That you're bigger than that. You're better than that. Keep going. Con, uh, he upbraideth us with our offending the law mm -hmm. and objecteth to our infamy, the transgressing of our education. Hmm. That that entire verse was like a flaming dagger right to his face. Right. He pros he professeth to know the knowledge of God. Right, and, and that's what that's what they hate. Right, they hate that we go out there on the highways and the byways in the byways with the knowledge of the Lord, with the law, statutes, and commandments as as our helm, as our sword. Right. We going out here fully armored in the last days, man. And they hate that. They hate that we have the knowledge of God, right? They hate that that we know, you understand, that this flesh will die, but our souls was created from the beginning to be immortalized. They hate that thing that they don't have that wisdom, right? Go ahead. Come He professes to have the knowledge of God. And he calleth himself the child of the Lord. Right. See, that's why they hated the Mashiach Yahweh Those of our people, they didn't understand his place. They didn't understand what his power was. And many of the people out here walking blindly right now, they don't understand our place and what our power is when we say that we the children of the most high power. Okay. When we say we the children of Israel, 
right? When we say we God's chosen seed and heirs of the throne, they don't, they hate that thing, even our own people, right? But what that next verse say, what was he made to do? He was made to reprove our thoughts. Right. We got to go out here and correct the damn heathen in the last days, man. The so-called knowledgeable men making wise the simple. That's what you see Israelites doing in the last days, man. We were proving all their thoughts. Go ahead. Come. He is grievous unto us, even to behold. Mm -hmm. For his life is not like other men's. Mm -hmm. his ways are of another fashion and when you see any brother man you see him he got the headphones on he rocking going up and down the street bobbing and down you know what i'm saying we of a different fashion we look different we dress different we style different we sing different you understand we talk everything we do is different right when you're gonna start to truly love yourself in in the separation that god did for you Right. God separated you to be that salt, to be to be that 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 sweet savor that that you sprinkle on that steak. Right. That false meat that you eat in the last days. Right. That's what the law created in every Israelite man and woman and child in the last days. Man, that's why they follow you. They follow you and they admire you from a distance because they know that they ain't got the same lot you got. All right, go ahead. Con, we are esteemed of him as counterfeits. Mm -hmm. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed. <laughs> and that's what we do, right? We go out here and we and we say, listen, man, I'm ready to die for your how your shy. We go out there on the corners and them highways and them byways, man. You understand the missiles could drop right now. You understand, and we and we're pro, we're 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 pronouncing the end of our days to be blessed, right? We understand that Esau, the end is our beginning, is our reign. These nations have to fall so that you can rule again, so that you can uphold what was given to you from the foundations of the earth you just forgot that you were supposed to be on top that's why you want to fit everybody in to what belonged to you go ahead Con. and maketh his boast that god is his father hey man listen all praises to the heavenly father and the heavenly son that is our father you okay go ahead let us see if his words be true. Let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. Mm -hmm. Verse for 18. If, con, for if the just man be the son of God, he will help him mm -hmm. and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Look at that right there. Somebody get Judith the fifth chapter real quick, right? So it says, for if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Do y'all do y'all understand that we are claiming to be the just men? Do y'all understand we're claiming to be the sons of God in the last days? We're looking for our help. We're looking for our deliverer. You say you saved already, but you still got enemies and you ain't learned who your enemies is yet. You know, these are for those that, that don't know and have not dwelt in the house of learning. You have enemies. Judith chapter 5, verse 17, real quick. Damn. There it is. I got it. Mm -hmm. The book of Judith chapter 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And whilst they sin not before their God, See that they, they listen, these nations understand where your power is. That's why that's why the the the, the uh president could come up and say, Yeah, I know true power. Yeah. Y'all keep sinning though. Let me keep y'all right where y'all at. I'm gonna give y'all this right here. I'm gonna give y'all this little this little present right here to acknowledge you, but I ain't gonna give you your true glory. 
I ain't going to give you your true story. I ain't going to tell you to keep these commandments. I want you to go ahead and keep sinning. It says, and while as they sin, not before their God, what happened? They prospered. Hey, we prospered, right? Read the book of Joshua chapter one, verse eight, and you'll understand what it means to prosper, not money, not riches of the world. You understand? Not that false prosperity doctrine, but you're going to prosper by the law, statutes, and commandments, right? Read Joshua 1 and 8 on your own time, not now. Go ahead. Con, because the God that hateth iniquity was with them. Right, the God that hateth iniquity, Psalms 5 and 5, man. Start, hey, write these precepts down as they're being called, you know, because everything ain't going to be jotted down, but through the Spirit of the Lord, you understand? Hey, we always got precepts flowing as Israelites in the last days because we know the book. We know the words that you fail to keep reading. Go ahead. Con. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, mm -hmm. they were destroyed in many battles very sore. Right, because if you go on the history of Israel, right if, if if we was in the midst of sin we lost wars we lost battles right but when israel was reigning when israel was on the top the nations knew not to mess with us because they knew our god was with us they knew our god would stand up for us and we could sit back that's that's why that's why i say that we that that 10 men would put a hundred to flight okay because they they understood the power that the Lord would bestow upon his children when it came time for war. That's why David was able to slay Goliath in many of the battles that he conquered in. Stalakia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's heavy. You said that uh, because this and this is why that crafty council precept that we went into earlier was important. Because as long as the Edomite, or not even just the Edomite, uh, we, we, we always want to uh, put all the onus on the so-called white man, which is which is warranted. But even when you go into uh, these hey, other... Hey, on for a second, um, Ram Slot there. Slot. No, you good. Um, even when you go into these other nations, and, and Yashu was right on point, they all came to consult, a consent, and said, hey, uh, these Israelites... We can call them Hispanics. We can call them uh, Latinos. We can call them Indians. We can call them Blacks. We can call them Jamaicans. We can call them Haitians, Puerto Rican, whatever. Right? Just they cannot call themselves the, the 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 sons of the sons of God or the the daughters of Zion, and <clears throat> because they understood when we start really coming back to the law as a nation. As a nation, when we start coming back to the law, statutes, and commandments, as a nation of Israelites, and when you see in you know South Central Los Angeles the Negro, and the, and the Mexican right, the Longos or the the Essays and and the Crips and Bloods really connect and, and come together and let bygones be bygones and and and, and connect, it was going to be a bad thing for these other nations, right or when you see Latin Kings and, and some of these uh, GDs or whatever, right? Some of these uh, killers out here we talking about. Black men that are frustrated, Latino men that are frustrated and they don't know how to channel it. And unfortunately, them, these brothers kill each other. But if they start telling everybody or, or, or soon as the Israelite man realizes or the Israelite woman, right? Realizes that, you know, we are God's chosen people and we got to behave accordingly, then it's over. That's that, cla that uh, crafty counsel. And then an another thing he touched on, which was heavy, was in order for us to, um, and this is why you got to be careful when we have conversations with brothers that's like, hey, let's go out there and just start form forming a black coalition. Let's go get guns and shoot guns and, and you know, form a black coalition and we don't have the law, statutes, and commandments as a um, as a staple on our gathering together, it's going to fail, right? I don't care if it's the Black Panthers. The reason why the Black Panthers failed, right? Can somebody give me Deuteronomy 1 and 41? I'm going to show you why every black militia, the, the so-called NFAC, why they didn't work, 
while your Black Panthers and your Nation of Islam, when they're ineffective, they're good for feeding the children. They're good for having um, uh, resources, but they can only go so far because the commonality, right, was never the law, statutes, and commandments. And this is why this is why it's important for us to keep come together and 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 make the law our our foundation. Right, so get uh, verse forty-one. So like it, uh, Deuteronomy one and forty-one. Uh, Khan, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter one, verse forty-one. And and so like it, before you get started, you know, for people that's on the fence and they're like, you know, these guys are just like the 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 black clan or whatever the case may be. Trust and believe, Israelites are are not uh, are going to go out there and do preemptive strikes and assaults on anybody. Because we're first of all, we're waiting on our king, Yahweh Shai. We can't we can't give the green light until Yahweh Shai right gives us the power. We don't have the power individually to go out there and start coming against the beast of Esau, right? The system of of, of the so called white man. We can't even come toe to toe with the National Guard or your local police department. Right. So it's not like <clears throat> we're we're just we're just uh, sitting up here plotting on a, on an attack, right? It's it's all about all things must be done decently and in order. Even our quote unquote vengeance, we're waiting on Yahweh to come back and give us those powers, right? To go out there and and to slay our enemies, right? Or slay his enemies, like he said, right? Slay my enemies before me, right? So let's get that uh, Deuteronomy one forty one. Watch this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 41. And then, then ye answered and said unto me, we have sinned against the Lord. You see that? So stop right there. So we all know what sin is, right? For those that are listening, right? Sin is the transgression of the law, right? So when you see sin, you can, you can 100%, 100% uh, uh, conclude that the law was being broken. Right. That's just that's the fact of the Bible. Right. That's the back. That's the, that's the definition of sin. Right. For sin is the transgression of the law that goes back to first John three and four. So it says we have sinned or we have broken the laws of Yahweh. Right. Read on, Josh. We will go up and fight. According to all that the Lord, our God, commanded us. So these brothers are trying to go out there. First of all, they were dealing in sin. Right. And dealing in sin, then they want to go out and fight. They were unclean. Right. They were they were wicked as hell. And then they said, we're going to fight in the name of Yahweh. Right. As the Most High commanded us. But the Most High gave no man a license to sin. So you, you're, you're, you're going out there and you're not girded up with the spiritual and the physical armor. Right. Read on. And when ye had girded. On every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. Come on. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among among you. You see that? So just like these other black, Hispanic, whatever revolution you could think of, right? That's not thus saith the Lord. And for a revolution to be thus saith the Lord or ordained by the God of the Bible, you have to have these brothers keeping the law. That's that's very plain, right? We didn't fight and take over uh, uh, any of the lands of the Canaanite in sin. These niggas had to be purged out in the wilderness after they made that golden calf before the, the next generation can come in and, and take and take the, the, the land over, right? You can't go to war and say, this is how you know the Most High is not with America, right? Because America got the most blood of murder on their hands. <clears throat> you see what oh. I'm saying? Oh. So so if you're in sin and you plan, this is why we tell brothers that's in sin, don't come to camp. Brother, if you in sin or if you are in, in habitual sin or if you're unclean, spiritually or literally unclean stay home because now you putting every brother at risk because of your sin 
Right? We tell brothers to stay home if they're dealing with things that's that's ongoing. You know, brother mess up, you know, once or twice, you know, we, we, we're not saying, but we're talking about brothers that's constantly in sin, constantly unclean, right? They uh, they unclean. Now every brother is at subjection because the Most High said, I am not among you, right? Read on. Least ye be smitten before your enemies. You see that? And we got, we got like Yahshua was saying, every time we went out to war and we was wicked as hell, we lost. That's why, that's why when the Most High sent, uh, 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 when he saved the southern kingdom, Judite, right? The, the southern kingdom of Judah from the Assyrian, why did the northern kingdom go? Why didn't the angel, right? Why didn't the, why didn't the angel uh, uh, rescue the northern kingdom? Because they were in super wickedness, right? These, these, these northern kingdom brothers were super wicked. So as a result, the Assyrian took over the northern kingdom, but the angel fought for the, the southern kingdom. Because oh. I was dealing with the southern kingdom. He wasn't amongst the northern kingdom. That's why it's important. Any battle you fight, you better make sure that you are in complete uh, 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 lockstep with the Most High by the law. All right, read on. Verse 43. So I spake unto you, and ye would not hear, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord and went presumptuously up into the hill. And, and that And that's like the Christian church. Right. You know how many Christian church, how many people in the Christian church, they plead the blood of Jesus on something vain. They got pork all in their uh, system, all in their refrigerator. They got ham, shrimp. They're not keeping no laws, no feast days. And they presumptuously, right, ignorantly or naive, right, it's a bit, a bit of naive. Well, they think the Most High is going to bless them just because, just because they go to church. Right, you went presumptuously up into the hill. Our people go presumptuously up to to battles, right? And they don't keep the commandments. They don't keep the law. They break them willingly, and then they go to the Most High for help when it's convenient for them. That's why I said you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, which is the law. Read forty four, verse forty four, and the Amorites which dwelt in that mountain came out against you and chased you as bees do and destroyed you in Seir. Ain't that crazy how the Amorites destroyed us in Mount Seir, which is where the Edomite eventually ends up, right? And why? All this goes back to us being disobedient children and not keeping his laws and trying to, you know, uh, uh, be in a position of, uh, we want to dabble in everything, and then we go cry to mommy and daddy, right? We go cry to the, our, our our father, our heavenly father, right? When, like a kid, when we biting off more than we can chew and and breaking our father's commandments, right? Read, and he said he's going to chase us as bees do. And the funny thing about all that, right, is you see the Edomite chasing us in America. We have no power as as a black, Hispanic, or Native American nation. And why should we if we're not commandments? Right? Read on. Even unto Horma. Uh huh. And ye returned and wept before the Lord. And that's the that's the the plot, right? That's like the the moral of the story is to return and weep. That means to repent. You go out there, you get your ass kicked, right? <clears throat> like Rocky. Remember when Rocky finally became Rocky and he was like on top. He stopped training, right? He, he, he started resting on his laurels, right? He, he, he didn't train as hard. He forgot the basics. He forgot the foundation. And he went out there and got his ass whooped. And then when he had to go back for the rematch, he had to go back to the basics, go back to that, that dirty gym, right? When no one was looking, no state-of-the-art equipment, right? That's the law. That That's equivalent to the law in this in this context, in this analogy, right? We got to go back to the basics, go back to the law. We got to return, repent. That's how you get the most high to ultimately uh, fight your battles for you. All right, read on. But the Lord will not hearken to your voice, nor give 
ear unto you. You see that in the most high. Listen, the most high ain't gonna listen to us if we if we going back and you know we <coughs> we in and out of sin. <coughs> you know, the, you know, the most high said don't be like the Assyrian king or the uh, northern kingdom that ultimately got beat uh beat up by the Assyrian. You know, you don't watch uh, it's like sports, right? You don't watch game film. You take the team too lightly. And then next thing you know, you lost. You lost the game. Why? Because you, 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 you was you wasn't really in. You wasn't focused. And our people got to go back to being focused. All right, that's it. That's all I want. I don't know if y'all shoot was back, but I just want to uh, put that out there. Hey, Salakia. Uh, I know. We, I know we're time restraint a little bit, but if I could, man, I was. I got a precept I wanted to bring out. Uh, this is the book of Psalms 56. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what the flesh can do unto me. So I was basically that, you know, uh, basically the most high put that on my spirit because David, you know, keeping the commandments, he didn't fear man. He didn't fear flesh. He just put his trust and his, you know, he put his trust into the most high. Con, what, what, what scripture was that again? I started at Psalm 56 at the top. Oh, Psalm 56. Come, come. Bring it out again, Salakia. Yeah. Hey, hey, uh, my bad. Uh, this is Psalms 56, starting at the top. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me. O thou most high, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. So, yeah, King David, you know, following them commandments, we know he was constantly at war and uh -huh. uh, putting his trust into the most high. He didn't fear these other nations. When you keeping these commandments, uh, you know, war, uh, it wasn't a thing to King David. He, he put his trust in the most high and he conquered these nations. And I yield on that. No, that's 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 powerful. Uh, and, and that's why, you know, what's funny is that's why the scripture says that which was written aforetime was written for our learning. You can learn from guys like King David. You can learn from brothers like Moses and, and how to be patient with brothers and, and sisters that's mocking you and and and, and scorning and, and, and doing all the things trying to get under your skin. You know, we can learn a lot from from our uh, our brothers and sisters in the past. And even on uh, something as simple as, you know, putting the most high, putting your trust in the most high when you got when you got a war, right? You got to go to war with your boss at work. You got to go to war with, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the person, wherever you at, you're doing business, whether, whether you're doing business or you're out there working or you at school, you know, or you put the, you put the most high to put to fight that demon. Precept. Put your trust in the most high. Go ahead, I. This is the book of Ezekiel, verse 30, I mean, chapter 35, verse 5. Personally, I believe that, you know what I'm saying, to get the whole thing, um, y'all should read the whole book, the, the whole book of um, Ezekiel, really, but 35, to get everything of how the Edomites really feel about us. But th this right here is just verse 5. You know what I'm saying? They felt about us in the past the same way they feel about us in the future. Because thou had, because thou had a perpetual hatred, thou hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had ended. So, um, back then, you know what I'm saying after we got done serving a punishment, you no know said we were still weak trying to rebuild, and then they go eat the Edomites again. You know what I'm saying? bringing more calamity and, and trouble down on us. Even though um, 
that was something happening in the past. I mean, it happens again now. What's old is new. What's new is old. So it's just it's like a ring just keep going around the circles. Are uh, you? Yeah. yeah, and even when you go to the first, the top of that verse too, it says, "Son of man, set thy face face against Mount Seir." And you know, like like y'all was going in earlier, that that mount is uh is is symbolic of a high stature or even a kingdom, right? So the Mount Seir or the kingdom or the the higher exalted. Uh, Sirite, which would go back to a man named Esau, right? <clears throat> that that's what this is going into, and they had a perpetual hatred. You know, uh, I think I think I heard this somewhere where if you're an immigrant and you're coming into the Americas, Esau's uh, uh, system on you know uh, uh, people that are coming in as uh, Registered uh, uh, aliens, I guess you would. What's the term? The, the proper term, Come. but immigrants, right? Immigration for them to get their immigration, they don't know anything about the American Negro, right? <clears throat> and Esau literally gives them a preconceived notion that we're all bad people, right? That the black man, right? Stay away from black men, stay away from Puerto Rican men, stay away from Hispanics and and Native American men. Right, because we're aggressive, we're bad, we're drug addicts. So they come here, and there's no, there's no, no reason why the Arab treats us like you know less than. There's no reason why the Chinese, and their and their donut shops, and the Arab and his smoke shops, and so, even the Hamite and their gas stations, they treat you less than because Esau system, and for them to get uh, citizenship, they take these classes, and then they get indoctrinated that the black man and the black woman that's why our women can go to the nail shop and, and get beaten right for nothing because they they come in looking looking at you as nothing that's that crafty council so, so like yeah and and not only that because we do it to ourselves with the music we put out you no know uh -huh. even though you no know i'm saying they're in control of what we put out but we we make ourselves look like Look, look like where the work people either. I mean, because our, our music is all about killing each other. And right. Girl, this and that, you know what I'm saying? Sleep with another man's wife. Right. We're, right. we're in all type of thug movies and, and gang movies. You know what I'm saying? They put us in these in, in, in these positions to make the whole, make that reflect on us as a people when that's not true. Yeah, I was reading somewhere, or I think I heard somewhere where, you know, the numbers on absent black fathers is drastically uh, cooked. They cook those numbers to make it seem like black men and Hispanic men don't take care of their children. But some of the best fathers, right? Some of the best fathers are Israelite fathers, Israelite men. Some of the best husbands are Israelite men. Con, I, I, I got to find yeah. that because I seen that, that, that they say, you no know, saying I'm using the term loosely, black men, air quotes, are, are the strongest fathers no set in most cases, but it makes it seem that way because our women run run a lot of men out of the household so they can get these benefits from the government. So that makes it look bad. Right. But, but if if you let us be part of our kids' life, that there is no other man they they will treat our our kid better. Well treat their child better than we treat our kid. Con, con. And honestly I, I believe if you give you know you give black men if you give the Israelite man, I don't even want to say black man, just give Israelite man, give us, you know, uh, <clears throat> and, and, uh, the same uh, base uh, starting point as everyone else, every other nation, then, then, then it's, it's, it's no contest, right? We're going to be the brothers that's coming home, working hard. Look at our forefathers in the 60s. Look at our forefathers in the 40s, in the 30s, in the 20s, right? We we died for our families. We died for our loved ones and our children. It wasn't until they started bringing those drugs, and they started putting that alcohol, and they started putting all this all the ways of Esau. When Esau, we started integrating, and when the black man wanted, to, you know, uh, dress in those zoot suits and, and 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 be fly and put the perm in their hair, when we started doing that, it was over for us as as um, being 
leaders of our families because we want to be like like Esau and the other nations. And then we started doing their drugs and doing their alcohol and adopting the ways of, uh, of America. And then, you know, of course, they we had brothers on that hair line early. Con, once um once they once they try to once they ended segregation, then that that's when our family started going downhill. Con, that's right. That's right. That's right. I, so I don't know if the brother came back. Oh he, yeah, he back. Yeah, shoot, that's you, right? Yeah, Con, I I've been back. I was listening, man. Hey, all oh. information is good information when it's about the Lord. I thought you knew. Yeah, no, nah, y'all good? Con, 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 con. Con, okay. All uh, praise to the most high. You know, like the brothers was going into, very spirited and very much needed, you know, for this um, particular discussion, you know, for tonight. Um, so with the, with the sake of the time, I believe we're going to have to turn this into a part two because I ain't even getting to the meat of what this is about but that's that's really what i was looking for when it come to this was an engagement um you know brothers speaking from the heart you know from that from that good spirited mind of the lord and 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 you know just diving into the certain scriptures and precepts and and you know just going in and feeding off the spirit man so all praise to the most high you know so we had we had 11 o'clock you know two hours and 27 minutes in, you know what I mean? So I guess, you know, what 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 scripture did, did we stop at, by the way? Do you know? Because y'all was going in for a minute. But I'm not, let me get Ezekiel. Uh, I think we were in Judas. Yeah, let me go. Let's just go back to the to the point of reference. Um let's go to let's go to uh Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 3 real quick, right? Just to bring it on back. And and we're gonna we're gonna wheel back a part two on this lesson for the sake of time. Um, hey, look, I'm ready to go tomorrow anytime if brothers want to just line back up. Um, you know, or I could come back and 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 do it, and it's all good. Um, so Ezekiel chapter thirty six verse three. Uh, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter thirty. Matter of fact, just go to verse two real quick, just to bring it on back, and that 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 kind of land me back on what y'all was just, you know, bringing out the importance of being and having all your 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 uh you know your situation intact, like the law, statutes, and commandments, before you go to battle, before you go to camp, you know, brothers is praying and fasting in the spirit, and you know, just making sure that we all we all together in the last days, man. Right, so uh, read verse two. Con, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse two. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are, are ours in possession. Mm -hmm. Therefore, prophesize and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. Right. And that's what you're looking at in today's time. When you see our people scattered amongst all nations, we have become a possession to the residue of the heathen. Those that are small, you know, amongst all of the other heathen nations, which primarily would be these Edomites of today's time, you know, if you look at them in the Edomites, you know, they tell you, hey, listen, we the majority, y'all a minority, you understand? So they are very prideful people, but we are possessions unto the residue of the heathen, right? Go ahead. And ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. Mm -hmm. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord to the mountains and to the hills and to the rivers and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, 
Right. So when you go into that, this is how you get an understanding of what of what Ezekiel is seeing and what he's talking about here. So it says, therefore, once again, ye mountains, right, ye of high stature, which would be the leaders or the elders of Israel. Right. Then it goes down right to the hills. You understand those that would be other uh, portions and ranks. Right. And then it goes to the rivers and to the valleys into the desolate waste, which will be the poor man, right? That's why the Lord said that he's going to bring, you know, uh, there, there's no respect of a person in judgment, right? Everybody's going to get the same information, regardless of your status in this life, you know? So when it comes to the Most High's judgment, you know, um, who you hold, you know, your entertainers, you know, of today, you know, it, it's sad, but, you know, we got our loved ones that die and we cry and nobody knows about. But yet when a damn entertainer dies, the whole world knows about it. Right? Oh. So it says, you know, to the desolate and to the waste and to the cities, you know, those that be poor in stature of our people, right? We gonna, we gonna prophesy to you too in the last days. We gonna be telling you what's going on. And you're going to have clear knowledge and understanding of this word going forward, man. That's what our mission is for the people, right? We're witnesses right now. Go ahead. And to the cities that are forsaken, mm -hmm. which became a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathen that are, that are round about. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely in the fire of my jealousy, have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia? And against who? All Idumia. And against all Idumia, right? So we're gonna make this sing a little bit before we close out. Let me get let me get Ezekiel the 35th chapter real quick. And let me get verse two. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Son of man. Set thy face against Mount Seir. And the brother was just going into Mount Seir, man, right? It says, set thy face against Mount Seir. And that's what we do week in and week out. We set our face against Mount Seir in the spirit, right? Go ahead. And prophesy against it. Mm -hmm. And say unto it, mm -hmm. thus saith the Lord God, behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. And I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Mm -hmm. I will lay th thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast sh shed the blood of the children of Israel. Right, because they've had a perpetual hatred. Really, they got a perpetual love for what is not theirs. You see that? That's why they go as conquering destroyers of the earth. They would they would rather pollute the water. They would rather pollute the air. They would rather blot out the sun that does not do anything for them. Right? They would rather destroy everything you see to put their shoes you know, their feet in your shoes and walk as the children of the Lord in the last days. But they, they, they've they killed you. They've taken your laws from you. They've taken your God from you. They've taken your land from you. Your land is desolate and begging for you to keep Sabbaths with it, right? But yet you would rather stay here and uphold, you know, what we've built for them. Go ahead. By the force of the sword mm -hmm. in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Right. In the time where our, our judgment is at an end, we came out of slavery. We, you know, um, singing sweet low swing chariots, man. We, 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 we digging and doing the railroads. Ironically, they destroying all the railroads right now that you see today. But, you know, we, we did all these things for this place and our iniquity was, was at an end. They gave us promises. Right. They gave us all of these different things, you know, uh, even up until right now. Yeah, I know. I, I know the true power when I see it. I, I know the divine nine. Our so, iniquity was at an end. 
right? But you're gonna see these are these are these are pure devils, man. Go ahead. Verse six. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. I will prepare thee unto blood. Right. The Lord gotta prepare you unto blood, Esau. The Lord have to prepare you unto blood. All the nations that had a hand in putting the children of Israel in captivity. So when you're saying that we're teaching the gospel of hate, I ask you, do you truly understand what the true gospel is? Do you understand the prophecy that you were supposed to do once you picked this book up and understood it or understood it not? It's best if you don't understand it, that the principle you must be taught again. You must learn over Become as a babe again, right? You can't put new wine in old bottles, man, right? Reform yourself. You got to be think yourself in the last days before you become a teacher. Go ahead. And blood shall pursue thee. Sif thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Right, and that's what we have to, since they didn't, since they didn't hate blood, Right. And, and and listen, we with Israel, we was told to stay away from that blood. You understand that? Right. Life is in the blood. And in and, 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 and our righteousness, we would we would we would stay away from that with our sacrifices. We would we would pour the blood in the earth of the ground and, and let it go about its way. And it wouldn't be upon us. Right. But because they love blood so much. Right. That's why the Hamashiach and Hawashah got to stain his whole garment with these with the blood of Idumia, reading, uh, pursuing the Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, right? Go ahead and read that. Go ahead. Chapter 7, uh, verse 7, thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate. Right, we got to make Mount Seir most desolate, man. The Lord is going to do it, right? Go ahead. And cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. Mm -hmm. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men mm -hmm. in thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee perpetual desolations and thy city shall not return and ye shall know that I am the Lord mm -hmm. because thou hast said these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and we will possess it. Whereas the Lord was there. Hey, Salatio, can you read the 13th and the 15th, uh, 13 through 15 real quick? Con, this you is the book. E Con, mm -hmm. this is the book of Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Thus with your mouth, ye has boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Right. So these are these talkers. These are these false talkers. You understand that have lied to the children of Israel, right? Their words were smoother than butter. They came and gave us promises. They came and said, look, let us learn, you know, how to how to till the land over here in the Americas. Right. They came into our land over there in Israel, modern day Israel today. And they took over that land and they took all our records and upheld them to be their own. Right. But they don't uphold the Torah. They don't they don't they don't follow the Hamashiach Yahushai. You see that? So why are you supporting them? Right. These are these are these are these are vain talkers. But the Lord have heard all their talks. When you going to hear it? verse 14. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, when the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. Right, and we know, right, when <laughs> hey, when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. But when the righteous are in rule, right, the whole earth rejoice, even the animals. The animals are waiting for that return of Yasha Allah, right? The animals are, are waiting on that return of the righteous seed of Israel in the last days, man. Think about that. Go ahead. Verse 15. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir. Right. They rejoiced. They said, aha, 
unto the ancients. Remember, aha, I got your lands. I, I, I got all this in possession for me. Aha. So it says, as thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate. Go ahead. So will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O mouth seer, and all Idumia, mm -hmm. even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. And they shall know that I am the Lord, right? That I am Yahweh. And that's what this lesson is in representation of, is bringing the children of Israel back to the fullness of acknowledging that all of this, all of these works, right? The heathens ruling over us, us being in captivity, us having to be on the bottom. All of this was to strengthen the nation in the last days. All of this was to purge us from unrighteous deeds, right? So I hope and pray that you will come back for part two because we will have to make a part two lesson on this. And through the spirit, I'm going to just stop it right here on the book of Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 15, right? And let you know that our power is going to put an end to Idumia, that our power is going to put an end to all these heathen nations that have ruled over us unrighteously in the last days. You see that we were supposed to have been set free long time ago, Israel. But through the your, your, your lack of obedience, your lack of will of, of sacrifice. Right. Hey, man. The Lord going to do away with you, too. You see that? And he's already done away with many of us because you don't have the understanding of the Lord in the last days. Right. So it's my heart's desire and my prayer that all Israel shall be saved and that all Israel come to repentance in the fullness of their likeness in the last days. Right. And repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Come on. You got something you want to say, brother? Like, all right, man, I was just feeling that. I all, right, all praise to the most high, man. Hey, listen, hey, through the spirit and power of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, right? We want to say the water, the water Yahweh, the water Yahweh Shai for the Akim and the Aqua that came forth, you know, to listen to the words of the Lord in the last days. We're not operating in our own spirit, but we have put on the spirit of the Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, right? to fulfill these deeds in the last days. And, and you know, we're going to come back with another impactful lesson. Uh, whenever the brothers agree to do it, I'm ready to go, you know, tomorrow. I could keep going, but I know for the sake of time, man, I got work in the morning. The brothers got laborers, duties. Go ahead, Ephraim. Hey, I'm ready. I'm ready to work. I'm ready to do it seven days. All praise to the most high. I'll be ready tomorrow then, right? So um, we we can go. We coming. We coming back live again on both channels. For those that didn't see it on the other channel, Salatia, right? Um, but you're gonna get the meat portion of of this lesson in tomorrow's um, portion of what this is. So if if you're going and you're you're saying God, or you know you're saying Lord, or you know you're calling on jehovah or if you're calling on whatever you're saying the lord's name is in representation know that this will and testament and what was brought forth to you today was of his namesake every portion of it all right our downfall our uprising is of his namesake and he put us through this so that we could be righteous servants in the last days man and I'm going to just cut it right here on that. I want to give all glory and honor to Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. I want to give a mighty shalom to the elders that have ruled well in the nation of Israel thus far. And I want to give a mighty shalom to all of those that go out on the highways and the byways and do this work in the last days. And, you know, much respect to those that are seeking repentance and, and seeking this truth, you know, in the humbleness and meekness of spirit in the last days, right? Shalom and Kwam Yasha Allah. Kwam Yasha Allah. Kwam Yasha Allah. Gotta get that in from a lot. <laughs> we out.